Today's Morning Mass is brought to you in part by these sponsors. Holy God, Holy Mighty One, Holy Immortal One, have mercy on us and on the whole world. Number 322, Gift of the Finest Tree. You satisfy the hungry heart with gift of finest wheat. Come, give to us, O saving Lord, the bread of life to eat. As when the shepherd calls his sheep, they know and heed his voice. So when you call your family, Lord, we follow and rejoice. You satisfy the hungry heart with gifts to find us we Come give to us, O saving Lord, the bread of life to eat. With joyful lips we sing to you our praise and gratitude that you should count us worthy, Lord, to share this heavenly food. You satisfy the hungry heart with gift of finest sweet. Come, give to us, O saving Lord, the bread of life to eat. The Lord said, I think thoughts of peace and not of affliction. You will call upon me and I will answer you and lead, you, and lead back your captives from every place. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you always. Uh, today, the Mass is offered for uh, the repose of the soul of jo uh, Joan Tolfos. We come before the Lord asking forgiveness and mercy. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned. In my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Grant us, we pray, O Lord our God, the constant gladness of being devoted to you, for it is full of lasting happiness to serve with constancy the author of all that is good. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Revelation. I, John, saw a scroll in the right hand of the one who sat on the throne. He had writing on both sides and was sealed with seven seals. Then I saw a mighty angel who proclaimed in a loud voice, who is worthy to open the scroll and break its seals? But no one in heaven or on earth, or under the earth, was able to open the scroll or to examine it. I shed many tears because no one was found worthy to open the scroll or to examine it. 
One of the elders said to me, Do not weep. The lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, has triumphed, enabling him to open the scroll with its seven seals. Then I saw standing in the midst of the throne and the four living creatures and the elders, a lamb that seemed to have been slain. He had seven horns and seven eyes. These are the seven spirits of God sent out into the whole world. He came and received the scroll from the right hand of the one who sat on the throne. When he took it, the four living creatures and the 24 elders fell down before the lamb. Each of the elders held a harp and gold bowls filled with incense, which are the prayers of the holy ones. They sang a new hymn. Worthy are you to receive the scroll and break open its seals. For you were slain, and with your blood you purchased for God those from every tribe and tongue, people and nation. You made them a kingdom and priests for our God, and they will reign on earth. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lamb has made us a kingdom of priests to serve our God. The Lamb has made us a kingdom of priests to serve our God. Sing to the Lord a new song of praise in the assembly of the faithful. Let Israel be glad in their maker. Let the children of Zion rejoice in their king. The Lamb has made us a kingdom of priests to serve our God. Let them praise his name in the festive dance. Let them sing praise to him with timbrel and harp. For the Lord loves his people, and he adorns the lowly with victory. The Lamb has made us a kingdom of priests to serve our God. Let the faithful exult in glory. Let them sing for joy upon their couches. Let the high praises of God be in their throats. This is the glory of all his faithful. Alleluia. The Lamb has made us a kingdom of priests to serve our God. Alleluia. 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 If today you hear his voice, harden not your hearts. Alleluia. 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 The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. As Jesus drew near Jerusalem, he saw the city and wept over it. If this day you only knew what makes for peace, but now it is hidden from your eyes. For the days are coming upon you when your enemies will raise a palisade against you. They will encircle you and hem you in on all sides. They will smash you to the ground and your children within you. And they will not leave one stone upon another within you because you did not recognize the time of your visitation. The Gospel of the Lord. You know, sometimes when readings are read, people don't, or the people who hear them don't quite understand what the readings are. About 30 years ago on this day, I, uh, I had a school mass had about 95 of our second graders there, and it was a second grade mass. So we had the first reading that we have today, and I asked the kids, I said, Jesus is portrayed as an animal. What sort of animal is Jesus uh, portrayed as? No hands went up, so I thought I'd give them a little hint. I said, you know, just before we receive communion, we sing a, a little song that says, 
this animal of God have mercy on us. At that moment, one little girl raised her hand and I called on her and I said, yes, what animal is it? And she said, a squirrel. And I said, squirrel? And then I started saying, you know, it says, I, John, saw the scroll in the right hand of God. You know, that's not a squirrel, that's a scroll. So the, the, the girl was uh, a bit confused. I had to explain that uh, Jesus, and I started uh, laughing and losing my composure as I was thinking about singing, Squirrel of God, have mercy on us. And I remember the rest of the Mass, I couldn't make eye contact with the teacher because if we did, we'd both lose our composure. But uh, John is having a vision of the end time. There's the scroll with the seven seals. Now, the Hebrews uh, uh, did a lot with numbers. Uh, four is the sign of earth because there are four directions. Uh, three is the sign of heaven. You know, the ancient Greeks would do whole treatises on why three is the perfect number and things like that. We, we don't get into numbers quite that much. So perfection is heaven plus earth, which is seven. Now, Hebrew has no uh, superlative adjectives. In other words, you can't say someone is the holiest or the strongest or the mightiest. If you want to, uh, give a, if you want to say that in Hebrew, you have to say the word three times. So this is why we have holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts. That uh, means God is the holiest. It's the only way you can, uh, it comes from Hebrew. That's the only way you can say it in Hebrew. Uh, and so uh, uh, one less than perfection is six. And we all know that uh, six, six, six means the, the most evil thing in the world. And this is the, the number that the devil has attached to his forehead. I remember when I was starting a new parish, they wanted a combination to shut off the alarm. And I said, I need a number that I can remember at two o'clock in the morning when they call me out of a deep sleep and say the alarm is ringing, we need to shut it off. So I said, put 666. <laughs> Someone was greatly offended that somehow I was in league with the devil, but uh, it was only I was in league with the security company. Uh, so when we uh, uh, look at this, there's, this is the scroll with the seven seals. Uh, very, very secure. It's sealed seven times. As each seal is undone, unfortunately, we don't continue this reading. We, we jump ahead in the book of Revelation. As uh, each seal is broken, something happens. You know, an earthquake happens. Uh, the four horsemen of the apocalypse are uh, unleashed. The white horse representing victory, the red horse representing uh, war and let's see, was it the uh, the black ho black horse is uh, death and famine, and uh, and uh, the uh, sickly green horse uh, represents uh, disease. Uh, we could, with some justification, claim those uh, horsemen have already been unleashed, and the the one in the sickly green horse has been doing a great job lately with uh, over 250,000 people dead in the United States alone. And so as each of these, uh, and then the, as the fifth, I, I think the fifth seal is broken, the just rise from their tombs. And, and so uh, they're, they're trying to describe, John is trying to describe what's called the eschaton, the final day. Uh, we know that uh, time has an end, that uh, Jesus will come and return upon the earth. We do not know when that time is. Uh, lots of books are written on it. I remember in my early days as a priesthood, uh, there was a book, uh, 88 Reasons Why 1988 is the Year. I'll sell it to you real cheap because it's not worth much now. Um, we don't, you know, even Jesus didn't know when the end of the world was. They asked Jesus, when is all this going to happen? And Jesus said, I don't know, only the Father knows. We start getting very apocalyptic now as we start getting towards the end of the church year, talking about the end times. Uh, the gospel talks about the enemies encircling Jerusalem and erecting a palisade against it. 
This is one of the reasons why the, uh, this is from the Gospel of Luke, this is one of the reasons why they date it after the destruction of Jerusalem in 70 AD, because he seems to be describing historically what happened. Uh, Titus with all his troops circled Jerusalem. I think in two days they built a trench all the way around Jerusalem, a four or five mile trench uh, with his soldiers. Um, and so he seems to be describing the historical situation. Uh, many of the things that Jesus said about the end times perhaps were referring to the destruction of Jerusalem. The early Christians seemed to heed the message of Jesus when the Romans invaded Jerusalem after three years of siege to break down the walls. It took them three years. So you can imagine how angry they were when they finally invaded Jerusalem. Uh, they slaughtered many. About uh, several thousand escaped and went to Herod's fortress of Masada, which is up on a mountain, with one narrow path. They said one man with a bow and arrow could hold off an army. It took the Romans a, a year and a half or so to uh, defeat those people. But at any rate, uh, there's no record of any Christians dying in Jerusalem during this siege. The Christians seem to have taken the advice of Jesus and to flee. A few days ago it was, you know, if you hear this, uh, don't even go back to the house for what you have, just flee. And the Jews really did hold this against the Christians, that the Christians were not there to help them in their hour of need when Jerusalem was under siege. And this led, uh, this was one of the reasons that led to the breakup between the Jews and the Christians. But at any rate, uh, we, we talk about the eschaton, the final time. In the early church, they were expecting Jesus, you know, the... When Jesus ascends into heaven, the angels say, you will see him returning in the same way. So, you know, they had kind of people looking out in the sky, seeing if Jesus were to come back. Uh, the first thing written in the New Testament, the, the letters to the Thessalonians, uh, basically Paul, people had quit their jobs and they were going to the church and basically just kind of waiting for things to be wrapped up. And Paul said, you know, it's going to be a little bit longer. Uh, and then he passed the rule, if you don't work, you don't eat. And that kind of solved the problem. And so people kind of got back to their normal lives. But there was the expectation uh, after the death of Jesus that the world wasn't going to last too long. This is why it took uh, 30, 40 years before the Gospels were written after the death of Jesus. Why write the Gospels if the world's going to end uh, in a couple of months or so, it isn't very important to try and preserve this for future ages. And so uh, when they began to realize as the apostles were dying off and this was going to take a while, that's when they began to start uh, writing and preserving material from the eyewitnesses to Jesus. And uh, so many of the church fathers that we have writings of were ones who uh, either knew Jesus personally or knew the disciples personally. And uh, they would talk, you know, Polycarp would talk about that he was a disciple of John the Baptist. And so-and-so would talk about, I think Ignatius was a disciple of Polycarp. So they kind of kept their genealogy in the sense of uh, their connection to Jesus. Someone once said, you know, when will we die? When will the world end? And someone said the whole... Uh, Christian ethic as though we're standing in the hallway looking at the clock and it's one second before midnight and pretty soon it's going to chime and that will be the end of the world. That we've been living in that moment since the time of Jesus. You know, and you say to yourself, what would you do differently if you knew you were going to die next week? What would you do differently in your life? And I guess the next question is, why aren't you doing that now? Uh, I had a bout with cancer about 11, 12 years ago. And uh, it was pretty serious, stage four. And so I thought to myself, well, no use. Uh, I don't think I'm going to need my retirement money that I've set aside. You know, I had to go out and have a nice vacation, buy, a, 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 buy the nicest car I've ever thought of, et cetera, et cetera. And I thought, you know... That's not 
that's not me and that's not what I want to do. God has placed me here. Uh, I will just do what I continued on with my normal life. And, uh, and I, I think I, I continued with my normal life, but with a, a, a sense of uh, that each day was a gift. And since that time, whenever I shut off my alarm, uh, you know, it's, when you shut off your alarm, is it uh, uh, a good morning God or is it good God? It's morning. You know, I always, whenever I shut off my alarm, I always say, thank you, God, for another day. We have the gift of each day to grow closer to God. We do not know when the eschaton, the final day, will be. We know that God will wrap things up and that history itself will uh, see its completion in the triumph of Jesus. And so with longing for the Lord, uh, we do not fear the final day. As Woody Allen said, you know, I'm not afraid of death. He said, I just don't want to be there when it happens. You know, I think that describes maybe the emotion of many of us. But we realize that that's part of life and part of the, the birth into the kingdom. And so we pray that uh, we may use our time well that God has given us as we prepare for that final day. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Please stand. We come before the Lord with our prayers and our petitions. We pray for a sense of uh, living life fully, of doing each day, uh, and living each day as though it were uh, the last opportunity we had to do goodness, we pray to the Lord. We pray for all those who are sick, especially Father Joe and deacons who are recovering. We pray for all those who are afflicted with the coronavirus, that God will restore them to health. We pray also for the people with cancer and other illnesses, uh, heart disease, whatever. We pray for them. We pray for our uh, medical staffs, uh, our nurses and doctors, and uh, all the hospital staffs that are so uh, uh, pressured right now and overworked. Uh, we pray for uh, them, that God may keep them healthy and uh, give them a, a sense of optimism about the work, the very difficult work that they are doing now. Uh, we pray to the Lord. We pray for our leaders, uh, civil and ecclesiastical, that they may lead us wisely and well and prudently through this time of crisis, that they may have courage to do what is necessary, we pray to the Lord. Lord here. We uh, pray also for our researchers, and we thank God for uh, uh, the discoveries that have already been made and are very hopeful for vaccines. We pray for them and their success that we might eliminate this scourge from humankind. We pray to the Lord. We pray for uh, all of us as we uh, prepare to end this church year and uh, we'll begin soon the season of Advent preparation for the Lord. That we pray that uh, as we end the church year, we uh, focus on the importance of time, the time that God has given us to learn and to grow and to uh, uh, come closer to God we may use our time well, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And now we offer to the Lord our hearts with all its desires, uh, all its uh, concerns, all its worries, all its temptations. We pray that God who makes the rough ways smooth and straightens the crooked ways may strengthen and smooth the paths of our heart that we might see a clear path to the Lord and follow it with all our heart. We pray to the Lord. Almighty and everlasting Father, you are the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end of all time. Time is your gift to us. Help us use that time wisely that we might grow closer to you 
and to follow the teachings of your Son, who lives and reigns with you in unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, through your goodness we have this wine to offer. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become for us our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Grant, O Lord, we pray, that what we offer in the sight of your majesty may obtain for us the grace of being devoted to you and gain us the prize of everlasting happiness to Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, for although you have no need of our praise, our desire to thank you is itself your gift. Since our praise adds nothing to your greatness but profits us for salvation through Christ our Lord. And so in company with the angels, we praise you, and with joy we proclaim, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna, Hosanna in the Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
the mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension to heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with this Holy Spirit, may become one body, one Spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, and with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth. With your servant Francis, our Pope, George, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O oh merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. We come before the Father now with the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days. By the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. The kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us now offer each other a sign of that peace. May God's peace be with you and your family today. May he watch over you and keep you all safe and secure. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. 
have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy of the condition of the but only the Savior. For those at home who cannot receive communion, let us offer the act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. As I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Prayer of Abandonment by Charles de Foucault. Father, I abandon myself into your hands. Do with me what you will. Whatever you may do, I thank you. I am ready for all. I accept all. Let only your will be done in me and in all your creatures. I wish no more than this, O Lord. Into your hands I commend my soul, I offer to you with all the love of my heart. For I love you, Lord, and so need to give myself, to surrender myself into your hands without reserve and with boundless confidence, for you are my Father. Communion Anaphon, to be near God is my happiness, to place my hope in God the Lord. Let us pray. We have partaken of the gifts of the sacred mystery, humbly imploring, O God, that what your Son commanded us to do in memory of him, 
may bring us growth and charity through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Mass is ended now. Go in peace to love and to serve the Lord. And today my uh, 14 days of uh, self-isolation are over. So I, nice to know that uh, I'm still healthy. That's a real gift from God. Uh, let's sing, Holy God, we praise thy name. Holy God, we praise thy name. Lord of all, we bow before thee. All on earth thy scepter claim. All in heaven above adore thee. Infinite thy vast domain, everlasting is thy reign. Infinite thy vast domain, everlasting is thy reign. Hark the loud celestial hymn. Angel choirs above are raising, cherubim and seraphim, in unceasing chorus praising, fill the heavens with sweet accord. Today's Morning Mass is brought to you in part by these sponsors.